select board meeting to order for Monday, September 11th, 2023. Uh, I would, the chair would just like to make a uh, couple of comments before we go to agenda changes and additions. First off, I'd like to welcome Richard Craig to the select board. Congratulations. Thank you, Don. Thank you. And I would also like to, uh, as I look around the room, I'm sure the vast majority of us know the importance of today. It was 22 years ago today that um, a large number of lives were lost in New York City to a terrorist attack. And I would just like to take a moment of uh, silence and remembrance. Thank you very much. Agenda changes additions. We got three additions. The first one is to uh, add Richard Craig to the liaison to the Morristown Police Department. Okay. So the vacancy from when Travis uh, resigned. And the next one is approve the right of way permit for 17 Demires Road. And then the last one is. Uh, contracts uh, in regards to executive session okay and those first two will be numbers one and two under new business yes please okay and the last one is executive session okay so with that uh, we have the minutes from the uh, actually first I'd just like to remind the audience of the rules of procedure we've been doing this for a couple of months now but uh, just remind everybody that the comments by the public or members of the body must be addressed to the chair once they have identified themselves and not to any individual member of the body or the public. Members of the public must be acknowledged by the chair before speaking. Members of the public must introduce themselves prior to speaking. If a member of the public has already spoken on a topic, they may not be recognized again until others have first had um, an opportunity to comment members of the public shall be afforded a maximum of two minutes each time they speak on a topic. So if people could just keep that in mind, that would be great. Uh, approve the minutes of August 21st, 2023. I would uh, move the minutes of August 21, 2023. I have a motion by Chris. I have a second. I have a second by Laura. Any discussion? All those in favor of approving the minutes of August 21st, 2023, say aye. 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 That would be unanimous, Judy. Uh, the minutes, approve the minutes of August 24th, 2023. Do I have a motion? Do I? Is Yes, that yes. was. Okay. They're in the packet. Yeah. I'm ready that I'm, because there's only two of us. Correct. I'll make the motion and you can second. I think they still should be approved so we can get them up on the website. People know that that's okay. going to happen that evening. It wasn't a okay. meeting, but it wasn't a select board meeting, but it's an informational meeting. Yeah. So maybe, um, yeah, okay, go ahead. Well, I'll make the motion that we approve the minutes. Do I have, I have a second? I'll second it. Okay. Um, maybe the minute should reflect the fact that we did not have a quorum. Yeah. I'll add I, that I mean, that. clearly it says Laura and I were the only ones there. Okay. Any other discussion about the minutes from August 24th? All those in favor? Aye. Say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, that would be unanimous. Under new business, um, I don't think the board needs to take any uh, action on this. But we would like to appoint Richard Craig to be, uh, we would ask that he be appointed the police department liaison for the board. Something okay. you're willing to do? Yeah, I'm willing to do that. Yeah, okay. I think I am correct on that. We don't need to take action on this, right? Okay. Correct. So we're just restructuring it, okay. Okay, number two, uh, right of way permit for 17 DeMars Road. So this was the one that uh, didn't come from me, in front of you last time because they were on a bar underneath the road, but they are unable to do now do that now. So they have requested uh, to go across the road. 
contractors, it's Lowe's. It has to be approved by the highway superintendent when it's done, so to make sure it's back to the spec that it's at now. Okay. Kevin, do you have any anything to add on this? Is the could you just let us know how the highway department feels about about this? Yeah, we don't have any objection to it. They, they understand that the cut of the road and how the asphalt has to be put back and how it has to be put in layered and tampered down. So we're fine with that. Okay, so you're feeling good about this? Yep. Okay, great. Thank you. I would entertain a motion then. When the motion just have, um, it needs a signature from the vice chair. No. Okay. I'll make the motion to uh, approve the um, cut on uh, 17 DeMars Road and to um, ask that uh, Vice Chair Don McDowell sign <coughs> the uh, permit. I will second. <coughs> okay, so we have a motion and we have a second. Do we have any discussion? No. Okay, so we have a motion to allow a right-of-way cut at 17 DeMars Road and to allow the uh, chair tonight to sign. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That would be unanimous, Judy. Okay, number three. The numbering has changed on here. Discuss and choose the bid for the road erosion inventory. Now, we have two bids in front of us that we were given. Um, this is a requirement from the state, correct? Correct. And this is part of Act 64? I don't know if it's Act 64 or not. Yes. It is. So it Act is 64. 64, okay. Um, how would the board like to move forth on this? We have a, we have a bid from uh, Fitzgerald Associates for approximately, I rounded this a little bit, was approximately $31,500. And it's approximately that. And then we have a bid from Watershed Consulting for $29,500. Are either of the companies here? Anyone have any knowledge of these? Kevin, do you have anything to say about these two bids? Background for us? So I've got, I got the same paperwork that you've got um, in front of you. They basically sent us a dossier of what they have done in the state, um, some of the areas they've worked, how they've completed it, their task, and, and done with it. I mean, I, both companies are very reputable. They were on the list from uh, LCPC um, that okay. I've got when I sent out the RFP for this. Okay. Um, so I, I really, other than what I've known through LCPC, I really don't have any other information about the companies. Is there a, a timeline that we're trying to match? Uh, we need to get the first billing cycle done before December because we have a grant that we've got from LCPC for this okay. of $8,000. So in order to get that grant, we need to have a portion of this already completed and they they build to us by okay. the time we get there. And do we know if, um, was that, um, do we know that both of these companies can? Yep, they've put on time schedules on both of them and they're, they'll both be able to meet that. Okay. So Kevin, you, before yeah. you leave, um, once the assessment has been done, um, this master plan there's a timeline in which the work has to be done. I mean, we're just not going through the exercise of planning. No. We will have to actually facilitate this. And so is it, is it over 10 years? It's uh, 2020, uh, 2036 and everything has to be completed. Okay. Um, the state requ is requiring us to do this <coughs> inventory every five years. Okay. So for the next couple of rounds, we're gonna have to do this again. Okay. We missed the first five years, so this is actually <coughs> our first one. Okay. And then will there be other grants? Um, I would hope, yes. Yeah. I mean, we get grants now through the state mm -hmm. for doing some of the Act 64 work. Mm -hmm. um, it, it varies by year by the amount of money mm -hmm. that's in the pot. Um, it's the first one that I, when I was here, we got 29,000 and then uh -huh. it dropped down to 27, then it was 22, yeah. this year's 45,000 and it's okay. an in-kind match, so we have to match 20%. Okay, just thinking ahead for the lovely budget that's coming. Yes. This is a, uh, will be a new line item, correct? Correct. 
Kevin, do we have any experience with either of these companies? Not this time, not with us, no. I guess my next question is, I mean, do you have, do you have any? I don't have any preference. I mean, I've read through preference. both of their dossiers and read their um, quotes. And so you're comfortable with I both of them? I, either one is fine. I think the lower one is, is fine. Okay. Not that it's low by a whole, a whole bunch. I mean, about a thousand dollars. Okay. Yeah. It's yeah. Okay. Thank you. And that's well, the that's watershed, watershed. consulting. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's the lower bid. Mm -hmm. okay. And so the work would start pretty much right away, right? Uh, pretty soon. Yes. Okay. I, I want to say it was like the end of September, first of October, on their dining line. Yeah. And we do have a grant to cover part of this. Eight thousand dollars. And um, I assume the bridge and infrastructure fund would easily cover the remainder. That's correct. Yes. Okay. Okay. Great. So we don't have to find any money currently. No. Not for this year. Not for this year. Okay. Cool. Right. Okay. Um, well, then I will make a motion that we accept uh, Watershed Consulting's bid for the um, erosion inventory and stuff, uh, storm water. Mm. Work, I guess, is the top of planes. Yeah, I'm just looking up the total for you. Uh, 29.430 is the total. Right, the completed one is 29.430. 29.43. 29 29,430. Uh, at the rate of 20, uh, 29,430. I'll second it for conversation sake. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. Go ahead, Chris. So I spent quite a bit of time reading through both of these um, since Friday, and um, I really felt that Fitzgerald's presentation was much more thorough um, based on you know everything that they were presenting to the to the municipality um, there's not a, you know there's no significant difference between the two but honestly I guess I was more comfortable with Fitzgerald even though they were a thousand dollars about a thousand dollars more I just felt like um, their presentation was much more thorough <clears throat> Any other discussion? Um, this is a long contract. I mean, do we feel that we need to do a little more research or um, What's the feeling, Jason? Are we under kind of a well? We are under time crunch. Time because the work has to be done by the end of this yeah. calendar year for the eight thousand dollar grant. I mean, both of these companies, like Kevin said, are listed on LCPC's list yeah. for RFPs. They're both reputable companies. Um, I did talk to LCPC today, and they couldn't sway me one way or the other on these two companies because yeah. I was trying to hopefully come here and say, "Hey, this one's being recommended by LCPC," but I couldn't get them to say that. So. Um, I think we're safe going with either one. I mean, we Kevin and I reviewed this quite a bit. It's, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's pretty much apples to apples. Uh, this one's just a couple thousand dollars cheaper. So, yeah, it is about two thousand yeah. dollars approximately. And I did check with some neighboring towns too to see, but they all bounced me to LCPC, which is why I spoke to them about yeah. it. Apparently, LCPC does all the other eight towns in Lamoille County, but Stowe and Morristown do their own. So I'm assuming because of the size of the town. Um, given our budget battles. Yeah, I, I just point, I, just pointed it out. Yeah. I did take some time yeah. and read through them. Um, I'm fine with, um, you know, the lower bid. I just needed to say it. Okay. And okay. So any other discussion? No. Okay, so we have a motion to accept the bid from Watershed Consulting for $29,430.
to do a stormwater uh, road erosion inventory for the town of Morristown. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That would be unanimous, <coughs> Judy. Number five, uh, no, number four, presentation for trees for streams at the Oxbow Park by Peter Danforth. Hi. Hi, Peter. Hi, Peter. Come on up. Yeah, I didn't know if there was a... I'm going to try and okay. share it right now. Presentation I can look to that gives you a better idea. But while that's being um, can raise put up... microphone too. Yeah, while that's being put up... Uh, so I'm Peter Danforth, Director of the Moyle County Conservation District. Yeah. Um, so we, uh, you're probably familiar with some of our work. Uh, we work with landowners, farmers, uh, municipalities, uh, lakeshore associations, everyone in regards to natural resource concerns. We've done a number of stormwater projects within this town, including the school as well as two subsurface <coughs> infiltration chamber systems uh, over uh, under Copley Park and Copley Parking Lot as well in the last four years. Um, and we do a lot of riparian buffer zones, and so that's what I'm going to talk about tonight. And um, since the flood, I thought I'd bring it up. Uh, I saw that you know there's sort of a blank template down there again uh, at Expo Park, and we have uh, um, funding through a program called Street Trees for Streams. And if you want to go ahead and just if jump I can right through, figure it. out how to do that. Okay. I'm going to do it. All right. <laughs> I'm seriously trying to figure this out right now. So it's it's pretty much what what we've had I in think the handout. You can just click, get that out of right the way. Yeah, right there. Let's see. Nope. It's pretty much what we have. In yeah, the what you, what you have. There we absolutely. Go. I, got it. I got it. But I don't have it in front of me, so I might need to look up there for cheat sheets here. There you go. Oh, by the way, I worked with I both those organizations, you. Fitzgerald Environmental and Watershed Consulting. They're both great, and I was actually the only thing I was surprised about was watershed was cheaper this time, which. Which is well, interesting. <laughs> um, so yes, yeah, Trees for Streams program. Uh, so it's a conservation um, program that's funded through multiple partners. Uh, there's the uh, Department of Environmental Conservation, the Lake Champlain Basin Program, the National Fish and Wildlife Foundation, as well as Pure Projet, which is the Quebec branch that also is interested in working in the area of the Lake Champlain Basin and Metro Magog. Um, and um, each Funding source has a sort of different deliverable specifications. And if you want, you can just jump to the next screen. Yeah. So we decide based upon the land, if it's public or private, uh, which of these sources we're going to go through. In this case, um, it's in the Lake Champlain Basin Program. It's public land, it's town land. And so we would gain that funding through the Lake Champlain Basin Program. Um, so the, the idea behind Trees for Streams is to create a buffer zone of trees. Uh, usually, um, they're looking at a minimum of 50, 35 to 50 feet. Um, but depending on that buffer, uh, a lot of different things happen. A lot of different ecosystem services occur, uh, depending on how big it is. So um, I guess what I'm going to try to present tonight is if we can gain access to those funds to plant trees in the perimeter of the Oxbow Park, um, I'll, I could shoot for a 100-foot buffer, but I know you have a lot of things going on within the park, a rec field and whatnot. Uh, and so I'll just sort of go through the different um, benefits of those buffer zones and, you know, basically look to maybe permission to move forward investigating <laughs> the ability to do this. Um, I would suggest that if you're willing to at least go forward the first step of a program development and looking at this, to um, have someone say like Kevin or someone from the town uh, work with myself, Stacey Pomeroy from DC, the river scientist, um, Katie Kane from the US Fish and Wildlife Service, and they, we could all sort of go to that site and sort of look at what the needs are of the town and if you'd be willing to have that buffer zone put in place and how wide that would be. So that's step the direction right. I'm going with this meeting. Yeah. Uh, so, I need better eyesight, but... <laughs> here, here, here. Oh, yeah, yeah, maybe that's... Right. A lot of stuff on this table, so... Oh, okay, yeah, so this is what I've already gone over. So, yes, so, what, so 35 foot is required. 50 feet is what they recommend. If I was to get this grant, I would probably match it with a grant from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife. And that would mean I could have an extra funds to put more trees in. Um, these will grow up to 300 to 400 
stems per acre. So stems, usually spare root stems that we're planting. Um, the new studies have shown, especially with fish and wildlife, that you know, in high flooded areas, especially to maybe a higher density population of trees planted. So we would think more like 800 per acre, up to 100 foot buffer, up to 100 foot buffer. Um, and so with that extra funding through use fish and wildlife and the extra, extra expertise as well, we could manage to afford that. Um, we wouldn't ask the town for any money for this, but we would require uh, operation maintenance agreement with the town to just observe and we might have one more year to replace some of the trees uh, in the new grant statute so we would be able to like say if there is only 60 percent survival rate we could get maybe that 40 percent paid for next year and but after that it's usually a 10 year uh, operations maintenance agreements with the landowner in this case it would be the town I'm jumping ahead a little bit cut so what does the maintenance agreement entail the operations and maintenance agreement uh, so it would entail with well, trees for students it's hard I even if I ask the people that want me to get this maintenance agreement to you they'd be like well keep track of how well it's doing and um, essentially with the assistance of Lamoille County Conservation District figure out ways to maintain that so we would probably insinuate ourselves within the operation main uh, operations and maintenance agreement as a technical advisor capacity. So if say there was an event, there was a flooding event, we could probably say, well, we don't want you to plant all those trees. You know, that wasn't what we asked you to do. We did that and it didn't work. So we we're going to find a way to bring that back and continue to maintain it. So I can't tell you, like they, they don't have a lot of, I guess these operation maintenance agreements, I wish had a little bit more of a legal strength to them, but they really don't. And they're really just something to say, help us out here. If we're going to have this work, we want a, a buy-in from the town, a buy-in from the people in the town as well, that this is happening. Um, if we were to do it, I would ask that we do it with a volunteer capacity. Oftentimes I will contract out and probably maybe will contract just for advisors. But um, in this case, I would like to make it a springtime hundreds of volunteers event where people come down and they really kind of own the park and say this is what we want to do right so and then have, so if we have a summer like we just had it rains every day yeah um, it's not an issue but if we have a summer like we did prior yep um, you know watering and all that stuff if you're talking that many stems okay. um, is that well for watering um, so we would water to initially I do have a system and we would continue we must say these trees are in place and we maintain it for a couple of years. You do? Yeah, we would make sure that, you know, things were growing, that things were, you know, we've, I've gone down there before for our old plantings and took ropes and tied them back up again. And some of them have made it near the end of the Oxbow, as, you know, from the old plantings we did in 2015. But this would be a broader, larger area that we were suggesting get planted than what we've done in the past. Right. Um, but if you want to skip to the next slide, I can kind of go over the, So yeah, um, so wide plant upper areas. Um, so the obvious thing is that roots stabilize the bank, prevent erosion, prevent uh, nutrient loading. In this particular situation, we're looking at phosphorus. Lake Champlain Basin Program is looking at phosphorus efficiency, how much from this plant you would actually be retained and mitigated from going into Lake Champlain. And that's what they're looking at with funding. So we'd have to make sure that looked good to them, in which it probably would. A lot of these riparian plantings actually show higher phosphorus uh, efficiency rates than most of the stormwater projects we're doing. They're, they're much more effective on many levels. Um, uh, also, it requires aquatic and terrestrial habitats. So when I say aquatic and terrestrial, I mean it's a terrestrial, obviously. You have areas for pollinators. You have areas for uh, wildlife on land, um, if you wish that to be. Uh, and then most importantly, though, I think in the water itself, you're creating shaded areas and cooler areas for trout passage. And that's really important to our funders as well. Um, and pollinators, I mentioned. And of course, carbon sequestration, sequestration um, is also important. Uh, so this is sort of a map I just laid out. And I gave people an idea where the blue line is, what more or less 50 to 100 foot. So I kind of have it scalloped, oh, okay. which I think is what we would want to do, sort of a more, um, you know, 
adapt to the actual environment and what you need down there for recreational purposes and what we could do for buffer. So that's why it would be good to be down there on the ground looking at, you know, with the town, like what would work here and how far can we take it? And, and so that, that line is just sort of a general. That's yeah. approximately 50. Approximate thing. So that actually, that, that furthest one there is 115 feet. I think I put okay. it on there. Yeah. So. The, blue the blue line. line. The blue line. That, that, the furthest it goes out. If you go across the other side, it's probably like 50 to 75 feet. So I just, I was kind of giving you an idea yeah. of what that would yeah. look like in general. Uh, so maintenance and species selection. So yeah, here we go. So there would be an operations and maintenance agreement. Um, we would work closely with both the U.S. Fish and Wildlife and the D.C. when it comes to selection. And we've been working on this for years now. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife have come up with a good program. They have selected some trees that really are very successful. And these are sort of, some of them are listed over on the other graph there. Um, and we'll probably stick to some of those and maybe put in some other varieties for diversity. But we want to make sure that whatever we're going to put there is actually going to succeed. And we've done this through trial and error for the last 20 years and they finally kind of figured some of these out. Uh, there may be other elements that could happen, especially if we get the other funds for the U.S. Fish and Wildlife, which is if we wanted to control any sort of invasive material, we'd get money for that. So if we want to do not weed treatment or anything, we can do that. If it's on the board for you, we can get funding for it. Um, or canary grass for that matter, but I don't think you have that much problem with it in this particular area. We have more of an issue with that in Woolcott uh, where we're doing the planning up there. Um, and sometimes now we're asked, they're asking us to maybe till and add seed, tree seed right on the spot as well to add an extra element of survival. So that will kind of come out in the wash. Um, I think really, really what I want to do here is sort of hope that we can go forward to at least consider this. And uh, if the deadline, the hard deadline already passed <laughs> for it, but there's a lot of money still left and it's usually floating anyways throughout the year. So I'm not too worried about it. Our, our mother agency, the Vermont Association of Conservation Districts, they know what we're up to and they kind of wait and say, okay, yeah. once you get your ducks in a row, the money will be there for you. So we're not too worried about it. Um, so yeah, um, I guess I'd be, I would be looking for approval from the select board to move forward with the idea, um, n knowing that we're going to go and look on foot and map and get advice from the river scientists from U.S. Fish and Wildlife as well as D.C. and the town to figure out what would work, where we should plant, and then once we get that together, then I could have a detailed proposal of how many trees and how much acreage, and then move forward uh, with that second level of approval, I guess. Great. Thank you very much. Um, I mean, this is, I, I have to admit, I'm a I'm a stream ecologist myself. That's my okay. training, and uh, I, I, I did years of this. I've done lots of stream bank restoration work in okay. Laurel County. Great. I did it as a teacher, so I guess one of my questions is: Would you be would you be working with like the high school kids at PA, the middle school kids up at PA? Uh, I work with the Lamar Union high school kids all the time, um, and I've worked with the middle school kids as well. Um, and I'd be working, willing to learn, work with People's Academy, uh, absolutely. Yeah. And they can actually help motivate and get things, you know, so we not do a volunteer event, they can actually help me with the advertising of it and whatnot. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And the kids love doing this. Yep. Yeah, you know, yep. I've worked with hundreds of kids on these plantings. And yep, and I've gotten better yeah. at organizing them. Yeah. It's <laughs> taking <laughs> so about six years, it's like curtain cats, but you can figure it out if you know who, where the strengths are, you know. <laughs> In my opinion, and there's no doubt the Oxbow needs some protection and, and building up that riparian zone, the stream bank area and protecting it yeah. is only going to buy us a lot of time for that Oxbow because uh, the, river, the river owns it right now and we, we need to give it, a, give it a chance. And if I could just say one more thing based on what you just said, uh, I feel like in the past some of our mistakes were that it wasn't, it didn't have enough ownership or knowledge of its existence like i felt like things kind of fell through the cracks people didn't realize the plantings were there things kind of but if we make this more of a volunteer town you know motivated effort i think that will make it more of a a, a long living event and just to be clear the financial burden on the town is it's minimal you know? i would say time and resources 
So if the maintenance element would be time and resources, it's of, of human resources. Mm -hmm. and, and that time that whoever is working the parks and that's would be working with me, that would be their time okay. to help. You so know. you might be looking for parks or recreation director to help out a little yeah. bit? Yeah. Yeah. Um, might be looking for one of us to yeah. Yeah. help out? Yeah, and that would all add as match uh, to our grant. I would throw my hat in the ring right away. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> okay. if, you're, if you're okay with that. But, oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, no, no, that looks better for them, too, to see that match. So. Would there be a bar burden on other departments around the around with, with within? I, I don't know. It, I don't know how it works. Like highway. Uh, highway. Uh, I don't know. Do you know? I don't know. <laughs> the highway department um, for Oxbow. Do they do they do? do they, what is their role there? In a sense. Putting it back together. <laughs> Putting it back together. So I guess it, it would be in a, a communication about what we are doing and, and knowing where the line is and making sure that everything's demarcated. Yeah. And so we know that this is where the trees are and this is, because yeah. in the past some things have not been communicated and things got kind of run over. No one's fault, it was just bad communication. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, we I, would, I would recommend signage when it's all installed, yeah. right. describing it with a map, the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. So you're looking for us just to uh, kind of say yes and, yes and move this proposal f forward. You would come back to us with something more specific? Yeah, I think, um, you know, obviously I'd like to do it sooner than later. I'd like to write this proposal up as soon as I could, but we have to do that on the ground investigation with the river scientists and from both of those departments I'm looking for funding from. Okay. And at that time I'd want someone from the town too to come down there and then at that point write it out, give it to the select board to say this is good. I don't know if that means I have to wait a month or not, but well, I guess. Okay. So my only question would be, given that we're coming out of a flood, yeah. where are we with FEMA? Well, uh, they're actually coming to town Thursday to inspect all our flood damage. Do we need, do you think this is something um, for the future uh, that FEMA needs to look at, insurance? Well, um, if there's, I mean, if they get damaged, I don't know if we'll get reimbursed the yeah, floods just, again but yeah I'd just be curious just to hear what their thoughts are on yeah uh, I know Interval did this and has done this for years and years and years and it does make a huge difference and I know when the after Irene you can see where all the work was done and uh, it's helped tremendously yeah I just again I want to I'm actually hoping that maybe FEMA would uh, endorse it as uh, I, I can't imagine they wouldn't uh, say that it's a great no. idea. I don't know anybody who wouldn't, but right. uh, and just our insurance to say that, you know, we're making very proactive steps to help. Um, yeah, when they're here and we're doing the site walk down there, I'll definitely mention it to them that we are planning on, you know, doing this project to help stabilize the bank. Yeah, and the shed with the skates is gone. I'm assuming, and is the FEMA's not paying for that, correct? So no. we don't have to worry about it coming back. No. Okay. That was a structure that no longer exists. So I skate somewhere down the Lamoille. Right. Uh, okay. I think this is great. Uh, the uh, I, I've worked on projects like this before, and I've seen what they did with Irene and what they've done up at Interville, and I I think it's about our only. It's a great option because we right. don't have a lot of options. That's don't. a great idea. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, That's if either of you or anyone wants to be down for that meeting, I'm, I want I would to have to soon. Be, yeah, yeah. Probably, probably next week or something. Okay. I imagine right. I as soon as I could get them out. Yeah, okay. I would love to hear, I'm, I'm curious too to see the level of the roots. I just, I lost a... I know, I need to look at closely at some of the old projects as well. Yeah, how deep, I just yeah. lost a uh, 25 year old uh, blue spruce, it just uh -huh. fell yeah. over, I was like, because the wind hit it the wrong way. Yeah. So that's, you know, I'm assuming these have all deeper roots that would, the design. So for our purposes tonight, if we would make a motion to move forward with a concept for this yeah. uh, trees for streams oxbow park that's simply what you would need from us tonight i now that i've thought about it coming here i'm like you know i don't have the full plan because i can't have the plan until yeah. we have permission to even look okay so that's kind of where i'm at so i would make that motion don to move forward with the concept for the trees for streams oxbow park project thank you chris so i have a motion do i have a second i'll second I have a second by Richard. Thank you. Any further discussion? Thank okay. you. So all those in favor of uh, moving forward with the concept of uh, 
um, the Trees for Streams at the Oxbow Park. Say aye. 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 Opposed? That would be unanimous. Great. Great. Thank, Thank you so much. Peter. I really appreciate it. And you have our contact information, or you yeah. know how to get a hold of us. I'll get it through. I'll go through the office. Oh, that's great. I'd be happy to get together with you next Monday or Tuesday. Okay, I'll, I'll keep that in mind. Starting Wednesday, I can't. Okay, Monday or Tuesday. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good yeah. Enough. Okay. Thank you. So number five, approve the errors and omissions certificate. So we have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven changes on the list. Does the select board have any questions about these? I think no. Charlie's here to talk to right. us. Yep. Go ahead, Charlie. Good evening. I'm Charlie Burnham, I'm one of your listers. We have an errors and admission certificate, which essentially the board of listers gives to the town changing values in the grand list because of errors and admissions. And we find that these seven that are listed here, I think you have copies, were all with uh, square footages, incorrect square footages uh, that Nimric provided. And we've discovered through the grievance process that, that uh, they didn't grieve it, but we it, it's a manifest error on on the Lister's part or on Nimerick's part. So this is correcting that so that we can legally change the grand list totals. So a number of these, most of these have to do with double sketching the first floor. So I get, I, you know, I, I was looking through that just kind of wondering what that, I guess I understand what that is. I'm just wondering why there's so many of these coming up. Well, we don't know either. Okay. Uh, our assessor, uh, Terry Sabins, has been going through, and right. also Abby has been going through each and every one of them to make sure that there aren't any others. And we haven't discovered any others yet. Okay, great. So yeah, we I will spoke continue to, Terry. to make sure that they're accurate. I spoke to Terry two weeks ago. She was pretty busy going through all this stuff, I know. Yeah. Yeah. So you need a motion from us to accept these? Correct. Okay. I'll entertain a motion or discussion. <coughs> I'll move to accept the errors and emissions certificate presented tonight. Thank you, Chris. Do I have a second? I'll second. So I have a second by Laura. Any further discussion? Okay, all those in favor of accepting the errors and emissions certificate as presented, say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? That would be unanimous. And I have the original signature sheet, which I'll, I'll sign. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you very much. Approved job descriptions. We have three job descriptions to approve. Yes, you do. Well, you got two to approve and one to uh, to look at. Which one do you want to do first? Well, I'll do it. In order. You know, according to the agenda. I know in the packet they're they're in a different order, but starting with the town manager. Do the town manager first, just because that's on the agenda first. Okay. Yes. So are there any, any So this comp? job, I don't know if I'll give you a little bit of history. We pulled Stowe's, Charles Safford's job description. We had him send it to us. Uh, we went in, we looked at it, we removed um, some language about a charter, uh, since we don't have one. And we also removed some language in regards to a road commissioner or something to that effect. Um, and we just wanted to bring this in front of you to look at, get your thoughts, get some feedback. Um, I wanted, um, I noticed in all three of these um, that there's no mention of um, knowledge and what their uh, software programs, Excel, Microsoft. We don't, for the last 20 years, I've always seen that you have a listing of, you know, must be affluent in something, or uh, you know, knowledge of Adobe is it, uh, it's helpful. Um, I would say that across all three, we need to, um, you know, in this case, the town manager, do they need to? Because uh, we're using this, the government software financial, so I I would like to see a section 
specific to the software and the <coughs> um, programs that we believe they need to have. I would also, on the town manager, the mat mathematical aptitude, um, I just don't think I would even consider somebody that doesn't know how to perform addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. So I, I'm not sure why that's in there. <laughs> um, that seems pretty remedial for certainly this level. So I, I would I would just encourage us to ch possibly change this to reword it to include the software and the programs and uh, notes on the specific budget software. Um, you know that we're asking them to use. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as far as your second half of that, you know, I see, I saw that in there too, but that's uh, some boilerplate language, and I'm wondering yeah. if there is a reason why that stuff's in there. As far Legally? As equal, yeah. The equal math computation stuff, yeah. Uh, it certainly caught my attention, and uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, it seems like we could possibly word it better, and I, I agree if we, we need to check with legal, but there seems to be, uh, a, a, I think we could word it better so that it, Sounds a little more professional for certainly for the level that we're looking at. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and manager. that is only in the town manager description as well. Yeah. Yes, yes. Which we're not going to approve tonight, but yeah, maybe that is something. Maybe as Jason suggested, maybe there is a good reason for that being in there. Don. Um, but it would seem like a <laughs> a minimal expectation. Yeah, us. What's listed here? But yeah, I do think the software and the. Um, um, just for the public's notion, it, it says requires the ability to perform addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, ability to calculate decimals and percentages, mm -hmm. may include the ability to perform mathematical operations involving basic algebra and formulas and basic geometry principles and calculations. So, so I, I can say, I can speak to that a little bit. Okay. When I got this when I spoke with Charlene, who's the uh, HR over there at Stowe, it is boilerplate. They do it yeah. for all okay. their, all their, just a generic. yeah. Um, you know, there's no, you know, they just make them all the same. I think Paula was, her intent on Paula did the other two. You'll yeah. notice that they're very similar. I figured. Yeah. Because yeah. there is a format that we use for all of them. Um, but without an HR director here, you've got Tina, interim HR director, and Judy yeah. trying to pull this stuff together. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I oh, knew that. Was not I, easy. I knew it was boilerplate, but I yeah. was like, yeah. and yeah. they probably need to up, update the boilerplates, but I was like, I would prefer not to, um, I would prefer to update this and add, again, add in the, um, <clears throat> More a little more specific language about you know the software that so we it does it does talk about software on page two, kind of the last paragraph before it gets into education training experience. Oh, you're right. Where's uh, where is it? Up, I didn't just see. above the education. Oh yeah, I. S um. I think yeah. my I just understanding don't. is that software changes, so they don't put specific. Software in there, yeah, because it changes. And, and I, I in guess the job interview that's usually covered. Right, okay. and I guess that was when I read down through this thing. I, I, yeah. I would agree with that. That that the, um, you know, the software stuff that um, that the financial uh, department is going to use and the uh, town managers department is going to use is evolving. And I think that we can sort of combine. Uh, what I did is I took a look at that mathematical aptitude and, and the financial accountability and sort of put them together and uh, I think that we can come up with enough language that gets the impression across of what our expectation is. <clears throat> um, but I don't know the last time I used algebra or geometry. So. Well, there, and there are industry standards. I mean, let's face yeah. it, Microsoft Word uh, or, you know, the Microsoft Suite, uh, Adobe, uh, you know, QuickBooks for basic, you know. So there are some industry standards that have been around a very long time um, that, you know, I see in every contract I've signed in for years, but. It does have that catch all. It yeah, does it say, does or catch, other yeah. system other software. System software. Right. Yeah. One of you. Do we want to have um, Paula or Tina speak to any of this? Since we've got professionals in the room too. Thank you, Tina. Uh, 
I didn't um, look at the town manager one as closely, but in general, you're right, we don't tend to list the different software programs we use. As a matter of fact, we don't have a budgeting software. It's something I've wanted for a long time, but we don't even have one. We have Excel. Don't, don't we use a special um, uh, program with the state, though, that we, um, no. that we coordinate with the state? I thought there was. There's no coordination with the state on our stuff like that. Yeah. But, a lot of our software is very antiquated, and um, that's why the budget just passed to put in a payroll software processing company to try to bring it up so that it's not as antiquated. But I'd like to think that at some point soon we could maybe get a budgeting software or something, but the reason we don't put it in any job description is because that's usually covered in the interview, and also it changes so rapidly. And you know you don't want to be locked into having to chain a job description just because you don't use X, Y, and Z software anymore. Oh no, no, I know that. So that that's the reason that it's like that. Can, Tina, can I ask you which? Sure. Um, I thought there was a software at the state that we were coordinating with. What did town? Or did uh, town you you could be talking about the software. There is a software program I think that um, the village uses. It's for culverts. Is that what you're talking? About? No, no, I was talking with you when we uh, that you were talking about. Um, when we were asking for printed financials, you were saying the software didn't, th th wouldn't print, uh, that you had to convert it out, um, and so that. <laughs> oh, is that it? Veemers? Is that yes. what you're talking about? Yes. The municipal. Yes. Yeah. Permit system. Yeah, I mean, we we have to go into the Veemers software and hand put in everything. Yeah. Yeah. That's the one but I'm that's about. yeah, that's we've done that for years, and hopefully yeah. we could get in this new whole payroll thing, they could maybe potentially create a file that could be uploaded. Yeah. You know, I'm not sure, but our system is very, very old. Do any towns use QuickBooks or what do towns no, most do? Most towns, town? most towns don't use QuickBooks. Um, use most towns use NEMRIC, um, the ones that have graduated from NEMRIC to something different like ADP or whatever. Okay. There are a few of those. Um, we're interviewing them now, paychecks, ADP. Um, to those are payroll services. They're payroll and HR services. Okay. Okay. And um, so most towns have found that the NEMRIC is not adequate, and so they have moved on to try to get a, a company that can create a file that can be in, uploaded into the, the NEMRIC general ledger. Okay. So that's the, the, okay. that's the thing. Thank you. That just gives me some okay. idea where we're headed. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Tina. Any other discussion? on the town manager job description. So I think at this point, the, uh, the mathematical aptitude, we can just leave that in there, see if there's, it sounds like it is boilerplate, it sounds like we're, we're good with that. And the language in there in regards to technology seems to, seems to cover the bases. And as Tina said, that would come out in an interview anyways. Yeah, yeah. I, I, it's hard to imagine a town manager. Somebody with experience as a town manager wouldn't have um, all the. Sometimes there are very specific programs that you know, you know. The technology experience that we would want, right? Any other discussion about the town manager, which tonight we don't need to take action on? Okay. So I'm going to move on to the finance director and. I know these are very similar. They're different in some re some regards, but they're also similar. Um, can, we, can I just ask a question? Maybe we can start with the finance director. Yes. So, um, what are we asking for on this? Are we are we uh, not looking for any substantive changes on the town manager? Um, are we just going to continue to digest it and, and review it again at a different meeting? We are just going to review it and at some future meeting. Take the week, you know, next Monday, maybe we can get it finalized next Monday. Okay. Uh, we don't really have a deadline, I and mean, we're still in the 30-day window for the, right. so we got some time. All right, that was just my question, is that we'll put it on a future agenda. We'll put it on next Monday, so if we can approve it then, then we will not. Sounds like work, of course. But the other two job descriptions, we do want to take action on site if, if possible. Yeah, we'd like to. So, the finance director then? So. Back this spring and summer, our HR director during that time 
uh, had a bunch of projects that she worked on, uh, updating job descriptions, policies, and so forth. So we're trying to kind of go through that pile right now and put this in front of the board now that the, the dust has settled a little bit. It's, we got some time. So the two tonight uh, that we have is the finance director and the assistant finance director. Um, these, the, the really the change is the finance director had some HR involvement in the past and that's no longer the case. So we wanna make sure the job description accurately reflects the job. Um, very quickly, reports to the town administrator needs to be changed because we will go to a manager. And I'm not sure if we do an interim administrator um, or manager, or, but ultimately it's gonna, there's, it's in the, there's three, three different spots that I, uh, four different spots that I saw. How about if we put in town administrator slash town manager? Um, well, we because we're not going to have both. We're going to have one or the other. Yeah, that's why I'm, yeah, so and I'm not sure I don't know uh, if it, where we are on this, right, but, you know, yeah. for now, and eventually we'll take out the administrator when we have right. the manager in place. Yeah. I mean, I could live with that. Yeah. Town administrator slash town manager, and that would cover our bases. We're not going to hire two people. No. I'm not going to have an administrator no. and a manager. No. So that would take out any... Yeah, difficulty can, there. I can make those changes. Okay. Um, and there was discussion, and part of this is going to be some of the the union, and I'm not sure where we are and what's up for discussion. Um, but the directors, uh, Travis started this conversation. The directors generally are exempt for um, overtime. Right. It seems like. So, so I would like to go to that. I'm not sure we'd have to grandfather. Well, yeah, I think we we'd have to change. I don't think we can do that tonight, but um, yeah. it is a director position. You know, there has been talk as making our director's salary. Yeah. Um, that's something we are looking into. Uh, that would, would not be a union spot, the finance director anyways. Right, right. So, so that's, yeah, so I don't know. I'm, I'm a little unclear as to how much we can actually do until. Well, the pay, we're not changing the pay at all. This is just changing the job description. Uh, and so this is, I'm assuming if we needed this, which I hope we don't, let me just throw that out there, Tina, um, that we would uh, review it then. If we needed it. If, if, well, hopefully we're not going to need this anytime soon. So I'm, I'm not sure how many changes we actually need to make because some of them I don't think we need to make tonight because we have a, an active person in this position. So. Yeah, I mean, um, the main purpose of this yeah. is just making this re general. Yeah, reflect the yeah. job that she actually does. Oh, okay. So We're just updating. It had some human resources roles in it, but we have an HR director that's, now. So that that's, answered my question. Yeah, oh, that's okay. that's the only the change. There's okay. no change in pay. Nothing. We're just updating it for what she's currently doing. Correct. Thank you. Okay. What I read sounds pretty thorough. I yeah. I do like it. I, in fact, I can comment on both. I think they're both very thorough. I think there's a lot of information in there. I think there's a lot of clarity as to what these, what these jobs, uh, what these job descriptions are. Uh, I do have um, a question um, for Tina. It says maintain accounting records for the uh, Morristown Centennial Library. Um, can you speak to how, how much do you, do you do for them? Are you doing all of their... No, that actually, actually, that's an oversight that should be taken out of there. We used to do okay. that yeah, a couple years ago. We don't anymore. That's okay. um, so that should be removed. We just do Pleasant View Cemetery and the Morristown Cemetery Association. And okay. I'm not sure. So that can be removed. Okay, thank you. I was like, all right, thank you. That was Tina, our finance director speaking so, for okay, zoom so i'm sorry i i've been i've been bad been lax so then everything else is up to date so it looks like the only thing we actually need to remove is the 
Morris, uh, Morristown Centennial Library, correct? Anybody else? Any other discussion in regards to the finance director job description? I would entertain a motion then. So I'll make a motion that we approve. Um, you never read it. Go ahead. What's the job description? Finance director. Yeah, but what is it? It's in the packet. I don't know where it is. Um, oh. Um, would the board like me to read this? There's, there's a long list of duties here. Okay. Um, so I make the motion that we approve um, the job description of uh, the finance director. Um, was I reading the assistant? I was actually reading the assistant that has the library. Okay. Okay, that makes yeah. sense because I'm sitting here okay, reading sorry. the finance director. I'm like, I cannot I'm find where you're talking pages. about. I'm longer. sorry, that was it's in the system. Okay. I, was, I was just looking through I, stuff I'd marked. I didn't, sorry. Yeah. I have uh, made the motion to approve the job description for finance director uh, as is. Do I have a second? I'll um, second. Yeah, go ahead. You second it? I'll second. Okay. Richard. So, second by Richard, motion by Laura. Go ahead. So we did um, suggest an amendment to that to um, hashtag the um, oh, uh, town manager so that we didn't have to go back and redo right. this uh, once the town manager is hired. So that would be as amended. Are you okay amending manager. your yes. motion? Yes. You okay amending the yes. second as well? Okay. Yeah. So where it does read town administrator, it, it would slash. read town administrator slash town manager. And we'll make these corrections and bring them back next week anyhow for okay. signatures. Sure. So if there's anything there that needs to do, we can. Okay. Work. Okay. Okay, any yeah. further discussion in regards to the finance director job description? Okay, all those in favor of accepting the description as presented with the addition of town administrator slash town manager, say aye. 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 Opposed? That would be unanimous. Okay, job description uh, assistant finance director. So uh, this would is where we take out the Morristown Centennial Library. Yep. Um, now, we the human resource component. This says maintain accurate and up-to-date personnel files for human resources. Um, yes, yeah, so this the this person does a lot of the payroll, but and earn time off and keeps track of all that. So this will not change if there is indeed an HR person. Right. No. This wasn't assumed because we didn't have an HR? Correct. Okay. And then, yes, I'm, um, I'm, I don't know, I'm going out of order. I'll pick it up next week. Okay. Um, that's it. I'm going to confuse everybody. Um, all right, so that's, because we had, you had talked about some of the human resources. Yeah, no, this is just maintaining, help okay. maintaining the files. So it's more of the assistant to the HR director as well. Just okay, so that would not change. Correct. Any other discussion? I would entertain a motion then. So I'll make the motion to accept the um, job description for the assistant finance director with the changes of Again, um, putting the um, backslash for uh, town administrator, town manager, as needed, and um, to remove the um, the Morristown Centennial Library um, out of maintaining the county records for. Even though we do still do the audit for them, is that correct, Tina? We still they're still part of our audit process. Okay. That was a yes from Tina. For Zoom. Do I have a second? No second. Thank you, Richard. So I have a motion by Chris and a second by Richard. Any further discussion? <coughs> so all those in favor of approving the job description for the assistant finance director 
with the changes being uh, town administrator being changed to town administrator slash town manager and the removal of Morristown Centennial Library. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Don't you want that would be unanimous. Okay. And just for clarification, um, Paula just texted me these do not need to be signed. Boy, I miss you, Paula. They do not need to be signed. So. Okay. Number, f we are up to number seven. Approve adding two volunteer fire departments to the Morrisville Fire Department roster. Savannah Clark and Cassandra Bangston. Correct. Uh, I think Assistant Chief JC Kelly is here to you want to speak about that real quick. I wonder who they were. Jason Kelly, First Assistant Chief, Morrisville Fire Department. So we're looking at Savannah Clark and Savannah Bangster to our roster as probation OBM members. Okay, Cassandra. great. Yes. Cassandra. Cassandra. I said, yeah, I said Cassandra. So they both uh, came to us. They have recent trainings as in uh, medical and fire. So they just chose to join us as fire department so within the village and been responding. Great. Thank you. Yep. How many does that bring you up to now? Uh, I would say around 24 or so. Yeah, nice. Does that make us pretty, quite yeah. fully staffed? We always need more and never have enough. Always. That's for sure. Okay. Yep. I mean, everyone's work schedules, days are still tough. Yeah. Okay. Days are yeah. Thank you. Any questions? They are here tonight. I don't know if you want any to see who they are. Or Let's stand up. <laughs> You're welcome to come up and introduce yourselves if you'd like. <laughs> Just introduce yourself, that's all. Uh, I'm Savannah Clark. Okay. Hi, I'm Cassandra Bankston. Thank you ladies so yeah. much for yeah. being willing to work in our town. Yeah, thanks I for stepping up. <laughs> Thank you very much for stepping up. Okay, I would entertain a motion. So I'll make the motion to add two volunteer firefighters to the Morrisville Fire Department roster, Savannah Clark and Cassandra Bengston. Do I have a second? I'll second. So I motion by Chris, second by Laura. Any further discussion? All those in favor of approving two uh, volunteer firefighters to the Morrisville Fire Department roster, Savannah Clark and Cassandra Bengston. Say aye. 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 Opposed? That would be unanimous. Okay, approve the hiring of full-time uh, patrol officer Derek Fadden. The, the police department uh, just, uh, we interviewed uh, a candidate and he successfully passed uh, the hiring uh, stages and he'll be a full-time patrol officer. His name's Derek Fadden. Uh, he comes to us with no experience. He'll be brand new and he'll work out really well. And he is, and Derek would be filling the vacancy that we've had for a while. This isn't, the this new, isn't the new position correct. that it's we. It's not the new position. It's our just ninth patrol officer position that's been vacant since the springtime. So he'll be filling that spot. Okay. That's great. And now is he going to be going to the academy or? Yeah, today, he, today was the day one at the police academy. He'll be there for two weeks. He's going to do what's called a level two certification. So he'll spend two weeks down there and then he'll be back training here in Morrisville. And then in February, he'll go down for the 16 week of uh, level three course. Okay. So about a year from now, he'll be, July time frame, he'll be working by himself next year. Well, I'm always amazed at how long it takes. Yeah. yeah. It's just about a full year. It is. Okay. I would entertain a motion. So I would move to um, hire Derek Badden as a full-time police officer at a rate of $28.95 an hour with a start date of September 8th, 2023. Thank you, Chris. Do I have a second? I'll second. Thank you, Richard. Any further discussion? Just curious, so he'll be gone for, so he's technically working now and then he goes away. Oh. Yeah, he's at the police academy for two weeks and then he's back. It's a level two training, so it allows him to do a lot of his field training this fall. Uh -huh. So when he does graduate the level three full-time Police Academy next year in May. He only has to do like two weeks of training, then he can be on his own. We're doing that three months of training this fall. So we're kind of 
doing it backwards, which we've done before. It kind of oh. gives the candidate a head start when they do go mm -hmm. down for that four-month school next yep. early winter. So just from my own knowledge, so how many, like, how many, in this year, how much, how many months will he actually be working here in Morrisville? To this calendar year, he'll be here October, November, and December. Okay. But he won't be on his own. He'll have right, be assigned. Right. He'll be that, assigned yeah, to somebody. Okay, thank you. Yep. Right. My own education there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other discussion? Mm -hmm. Okay. Question? Yeah, come on up. Introduce yourself. My name is Jan Paris. Um, if I understood correctly, he was hired on the 8th. That's when he's being paid starting the 8th of September. But his position hasn't been approved, right? Today's the 11th. So how do we pay somebody that doesn't really have an approved position yet? That, that's my question. Is that correct? Yeah, that is correct. It's because of the police academy deadline was today. Uh, we've done this in the past with other applicants uh, based off training uh, needs and so forth. And if we wouldn't have made this round the today's class, it would be February until we could actually have them do anything. Yeah, so it would just be it would be just retroactive because of the scheduling issue. Okay. Yeah. No, we didn't. Yeah, it was implied, not spoken. No. Yeah. No. Okay. Any other discussion? Okay, all those in favor of approving uh, Derek Fadden as a full-time police officer at a rate of $28.95 per hour with a start date of September 8, 2023. Say aye. 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 Opposed? That would be unanimous. Number nine, accept the resignation of EMS provider Derek Choate. Good evening, Bill Mapes, EMS Chief. Um, I start by uh, welcoming Mr. Craig to the board, and we look forward to working with you. Um, Derek, this is uh, essentially a nullification of the board's action at the last meeting where we hired Derek Choate. Uh, uh, he accepted the position, uh, and then uh, regretfully his wife had a change in work circumstance. He will be unable to commit to the hours uh, here. Uh, so uh, he's, uh, he's asked, uh, uh, to uh, not uh, to essentially nullify his acceptance of the position, and uh, this is essentially a housekeeping item just to remove him off our roster. We've already reposted the uh, position is open uh, on the uh, the usual places that we advertise for EMS providers. Okay. okay. Thank you, Bill. Thanks. I had noticed that his his name came up in the minutes from yeah. August twenty first. Um. Okay. So I would make the motion um, to accept the resignation um, of EMS provider Derek Choate. Thank you, Chris. Do I have a second? I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor of accepting the resignation of EMS provider Derek Choate, say aye. 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 Opposed? That would be unanimous as well. Thank you very much. Do we have any old business? Nothing. Approve the warrants. There are none because we're on an off week. You signed them last, last week. week. I do remember signing last week, yes. yes. <clears throat> okay. So there's no warrants. Department head reports. So introduce you're yourself, please. Yeah, thank you. Um, as many of you probably seen, we've put on some black up on Center Road. Uh, it was just a skim, nothing major. Hopefully, to get us through another couple of three years until we can get it into a rotation of actually grinding the road up and, and resurfacing it. Um, the parking ride down here by the end of Bridge is now paved and striped, mm -hmm. um, and they're working out here on the town parking lot as well. We started that today. Hopefully, they'll finish that tomorrow and be done and out of there, and then we'll just have to work around to get the stripes down. Um, Any timeline on the stripes? Yeah. It's really weather permitting at this okay. point. We may have to come in and on a Friday and get some people to come in off, off shift to get it done because of the temperatures. We need to be above 68 degrees and preferably sunshine. Uh -huh. It allows the paint to dry better okay. and adhere better. 
Well, that's good news. They had told us that they were going to start September 15th, and they're going to have most of it done before September 15th. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's, great. that's a good thing. Yeah. Um, in the pit, I think Mr. Percy is just about done. I think he's got like another half a day wow. of processing up there, and he'll be out of there. Good. And we've still got weeks of hauling. Right. Yeah. Some big piles up there. And I hear we've been doing some major work on a few roads. We have. Uh, Cody Hill has been completely resurfaced. We've been working out on Gray, uh, Earl Gray. Uh, we did some work up on Beacon. A lot of major resurfacing. Great. Thank Kevin, you, Kevin. Kevin, um, mm -hmm. you and I had spoken about um, potential road audit. Um, were, did you have a chance to talk with, I think you were going to talk with the LCPC? Uh, uh, have they, I've reached out to them and they have not reached back out to me. Um, I will poke them again when I'm back on, yeah. on Thursday. Yep, yeah. thanks for coming in too on your vacation. Yes. No worries. Thank you. Yeah. All Thank right, you. thanks. Thanks, Kevin. Have a couple of nice days off. Any other department heads? Okay. Town Administrator's Report. Uh, just a couple things. We're starting to work on the annual uh, town report. Judy, I shouldn't say we, Judy is starting to work on the annual report and we'll be putting that together this fall. Uh, so getting that out first of the year. Uh, Kevin hit on the paving. It's, that's going pretty well considering the weather we're having. And that's you know that's pretty much it. We're still working on hiring uh, HR director. Uh, that's still posted. Uh, that's all I got. Okay. Thank you, Jason. Select board comments. Mr. Craig, we can start with you. Question. I got a uh, word for Jason there. About the TA report. About the annual report. Do you want to come up? Introduce yourself. Tony Cody, Cody Hill. So Jason, what's that uh, annual report going to look like? It's going to look a lot like last year's, as far as the format. Or? Nobody can read it. No, no, nobody that's got a 12th grade education, how's that send to you? As far as the uh, budget goes in it? Any of it. Because we put that out to bid, uh, the who formats that and makes it for us. So we haven't put that out to bid yet. Used to be like this big, it was pretty handy. So just keep that in mind. Okay. Because what's coming out there this big and that big. So you think it's too big? It's too big, it's waste. So you think it's too much stuff in it then? I guess I'm confused. The I size. Think lot, I think a lot of people want to know what the budget is and you can't understand it. Okay. The average person cannot understand that. Okay. okay? Just keep it in mind. We'll do. Thanks. I was going to say, Travis actually uh, uh, brought in an example of, uh, I can't remember if it was Stowe's or Essex, that had a like two-page really clear description of what the changes were. Um, but Yeah, it was uh, Stowe's Fast Facts. Yeah, that was, that was a really... Um, he recommended, and I have to say, I thought it w was a really great idea to made it you know, really clear rather sure. than trying to sort numbers. Okay. No, we're always uh, happy to hear some input. So. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to go back to select board comments. Richard? I don't really have any comments except for I'm happy to be here. Well, we're happy Thank to have you. you. Thank you. Laura? Um, I would just say we're happy to have you here, and um, it's we're not quite back to five, but... Um, it's going to be nice to have five full voices and hopefully very independent voices so that all aspects of our population are uh, represented. And um, appreciate everybody who did get out and vote. Um, and going forward, uh, again, I'm, I'm hoping that we can all bring a, a level of pro professionalism in um and civility because we're now dealing with a nine million dollar budget which makes us an official business service industry business um and it's i know it's there's still a lot of um anxiousness out there um and i i hope to be part of instituting some of those changes that we discussed 
Um, and thank you all for your patience and um, let's hopefully get this done in a uh, much more expedient manner and more civilized manner for all of us. I'm something select work too, so we're all gonna work hard to make it as painless. I certainly am gonna try to do, make it as painless and um, so that we can get through it in a much um, friendlier manner, I would say. Thank you, Laura. Yep. Chris? Yeah, so um, over the last um, couple of weeks, um, I've been working on a stuff to do list that um, we've sort of talked about through the budget process. Um, you know, one of the things um, that um, Kathy Chafee and, and several other folks uh, have spoken about uh, during the budget process was ways to increase our revenue. And so, taking that to heart um, in our conversations with um, Todd Thomas uh, regarding um, options for local option tax. Um, I've done a fair amount of research, um, really interesting numbers, but I would like to just kind of highlight a few things tonight, but put it on an agenda item so that we can sort of begin to talk about a town charter <coughs> and um, how we might want to move forward with proposing a local options tax because there's a number of steps that we need to go through to get there. Um, so I went on the tax department's website and um, from 2019 through the first quarter of 2023. And um, the blip in, this, in the um, curve here was between 2019 and 2020, obviously because of, of COVID. But what we've seen um, in Morristown is a steady increase in meals and alcohol um, revenue. Um, 2022, um, Morristown saw $18,642,000 worth of tax revenue on meals and $1.5 million in alcohol sales. Um, the interesting thing with the tax department is, is that uh, ending in 2019 was the last year that they published Morristown's rooms tax. It was uh, about 1.1 million. From 2020 through the first quarter of 2023, they no longer disclose that information. So I emailed them and got a very nice email from a young lady at the tax department that's saying that because there's less than 10 um, providers that um, file tax, rooms tax from the town of Morristown, they no longer disclose that information. So. I emailed her back and said, well, Airbnbs are part of this script. And there are a number of them in Morristown. Um, and she replied to me, yes, that they all congregate under one tax filing through Airbnb, the corporation. And therefore, that, along with the other folks that file their rooms tax, uh, we are under the 10 threshold, so that is a non-disclosure, and they cannot give us that information. So they, the Airbnb is considered one? They file it under one. <laughs> so with that being said, um, that doesn't mean that it doesn't still qualify. It's just that I, I can't get the data to share. Yeah. But in, in 2019, um, it was $1.1 million worth of tax revenue on rooms. So what does that all kind of distill down to? So if you just kind of take 2022 calendar year um, with the 18.6 million in meals and 1.6 million in alcohol, what that would distill down to is about $206,000 worth of revenue if we had a 1% tax on those two items. Um, towns who have a local option tax get uh, seventy percent of that revenue, thirty percent stays with the state. So what that would drill down to us, not including anything uh, included with rooms, is one hundred and forty-two thousand dollars worth of tax revenue that would come to the town of Morristown if we were using twenty twenty-two as the uh, picture. It would actually be more than that if we factor in rooms, and I guess we could guesstimate that it would be somewhere between ten and twenty thousand dollars worth of additional revenue. From room. So you're talking probably anywhere between $150,000 and $160,000. So 
So what I did in terms of that, because I think it's important to understand where that money comes from. Does it come from a blend of resident, non-resident sales? Because I, what I, I guess personally, what I would like to stay away from is the fact that if 80% of the of this tax money comes from residents, then basically we're double taxing people, a majority of residents in Moorestown. But if it's a if it's a different split, it's a 40% resident, 60% non-resident, because obviously we all shop and eat here in the in, in Morristown. If it's a better blend on terms of where that money comes from, then I think that's a different conversation. So I sat down with Trisha Fowler, our um, our economic development director and asked her if she would be willing to begin to gather information from businesses to see if they would be either already track where their sales come from or um, if they would be willing to track that uh, for a period of months so that we would begin to understand uh, where this money is being generated from and she has agreed to do that. Right. So we, um this sounds like this should, we should be, we should hold off on all this detailing until we get it on the agenda. Right, I'm just giving you some okay. background. I'm not going to carry this any farther, but I just kind of wanted to let you know what I've been okay. working yeah, on it just seems like we've for this. So, um, you know, hopefully Tricia will be able to reach out to the majority of businesses. We can put this on as, a, as, on a, as an agenda item and then begin to talk a little bit about a simple charter to get us where we need to be and potentially if we could look at um, town meeting uh, March to maybe bring this to fruition, maybe it's not possible. Um, but I think that um, time is of the essence and um, we now have the opportunity to start working on some things um, that make a difference and this is one of them, I think. And Trisha felt that was something that she might be able to get a <laughs> handle on? Yes. The breakdown? Yeah. Um, the other th um, piece that I've been working on um, is an RFP for the town garage uh, potential consolidation. And um, I had a, a really good conversation with one of our residents here, and, and he was actually here this evening, uh, Charlie Burnham, last week, um, sort of seeking his counsel on the best way to approach uh, whether we would want to go through a consultant, an RFP for a consultant to sort of do a, an analysis, uh, working in conjunction with Kevin Barrows, um, our uh, superintendent, to take a look at our needs uh, for the overall town highway department, whether Cochrane Road would be uh, viable um, to consolidate everything on that site, um, and uh, take a look at you know duplication of any equipment, um, and um, figure out whether it's a teardown, whether it's a renovation, but begin to, to look at an RFP to do the deep dive analysis on this um, and the best way to RFP this thing so we can get that ball rolling. Our lease agreement ends in September 2025, so we have exactly two years to bring this to fruition. There's a lot of work to get us there. Um, but the last thing I would want to see this community do is to sign another five-year lease at 100,000 plus a uh, year um, on Old Creamy Road if we could absolutely avoid it. Utilize that money someplace else. So anyways, um, those are two things that I've been working on this last couple of weeks since the budget vote. Um, I'd like that, once I have some more information, I'd like that to become a, an agenda item as well. Thank you, Chris. And when you consider the hundred thousand dollars on that, on the old Premier Road building and um, the options tax that you're talking about, another maybe one hundred fifty thousand dollars. There's two hundred fifty thousand dollars that might be able to go towards um, the building of a building of a new new garage. So, okay, thank you. Uh, I I was uh, for my own comments. I was going to talk about. The paving, but Kevin did that. There has uh, this is a concern. There's been a number of comments recently about. Uh, well, I guess it was a uh, two weeks ago. Uh, tomorrow, uh, tonight, tomorrow, tomorrow night. There was a, a town meeting about uh, some of the uh, 
some of the burglaries and crime that's been going on in town and, uh, and a number of people were here. And uh, there's been some posts on Front Porch Forum and I just want to say that I am very much in support of our police department and what our police department are doing. And uh, I want to thank you, uh, Jason, and your officers for all that you do to keep this community safe. And I think you guys are doing a terrific job in the face of, uh, in the face of uh, a difficult time. So that was what I wanted to say. So I'm going to move on to community comments. And in regards to community comments, I just want to remind the audience to please direct their comments to the chair and um, to, uh, well, direct your comments to the chair. Come on up and introduce yourself. Hi, um, I'm Alex Sear. Um, perhaps I haven't kept up with this issue as well as I could have, but I'm hoping um, now that we voted to have a town manager um, and there's been some discussion of a job description, um, we can get some information on um, whether there needs to be sort of like a new advertisement in search um, since the search for a town administrator and whether we might have um, some information about who might be stepping into that role or, or when they might step into that role soon. So at this point, we, okay, well, thank you. Thank you for that information. Yeah. Come on up. Just so everybody's clear, because whatever you bring up is not on the agenda, we can't legally comment or bring it up for discussion. Um, so that's, so when you hear us not, um, and it's a legal thing. So it's for concerns, but. Uh, when you're setting up the agenda for next week, yes. or whatever, you'll, you'll know that. Yep, yep. Thank you, Laura. Hence my. Yeah, it seems weird to, you know. Fighting my own tongue there. Comment, the thing we can. Uh, Tony Cody, Cody Hill, first of all, I want to congratulate the town on passing their budget, even though I don't approve it myself. Congratulations. And hopefully we can move forward in the future together because a lot of us are still not together. However, I want to thank uh, whoever is responsible for graveling Cody Hill after this many years. There is one issue up there, and it's a zoning issue. I've called Todd. There's pretty close to my neighbor. I'm not mentioning any names. They're right on the they're right on the road, and that's taking that water right down the center of the road. The stuff that she's got on that edge of the road needs to be moved, and it needs to be moved as soon as possible. And it's been there for years and years and years, but there's no ditch air at all. So that would help keep our our new gravel in place. And thirdly. Chris, we're going to clash with the town garage. Okay. Direct your comments to me, please. Yep. I just want to know because of what he just said. So my comments are, I want to know if what I suggested three or four months ago with, with a place to park the trucks and then kind of re remodel what we got should be sufficient at least five to ten years. Taxpayers need to get back on their feet. We shouldn't even be talking about a brand new building, if that's what you're talking about. I apparently I, I can't speak. Yeah. So. Thank you. But, Is that it? Yeah, but I'm going to be on it, okay? Thank you. Thank you, Tony. Anybody else in the audience? I do have one person on Zoom, but come on up. Introduce yourself, please. Yeah, I'm Jerry Throne. Uh, I happen to be a uh, project manager for the Elmore Town Garage. Uh, and they're building a new garage there, a $2.1 million project. I know they received a lot of funds uh, through, f through federal grants and state grants. So I urge you to uh, consider that when you're looking at uh, the project that you're thinking about doing. Uh, my experience in construction is that if you try to renovate a, a structure, you're going to wind up costing more than if you build a new one. So keep that in mind, too. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else in the audience before I move on? 
Jan Paris, I just want to say that uh, we went to the planning meeting and with Todd, uh, the zoning administrator, when they were talking about this local options tax, and they seemed to all think that this was going to be geared towards the tourists. I really appreciate Chris's thoughts of that this is going to affect us as well because we eat in town too. Granted, we don't stay at the Sunset Motel because we own a home, but I mean, we all eat here in town. We already pay 10% meals tax which is absorbent and so i mean uh, hopefully this information when it comes out will show that we shouldn't have to be the the burden of another percent which you know in five years it'll be two percent i mean these things never go away they just continue to get bigger that's all i wanted to say so thank you chris for looking into that thank you Jan. we'll get to zoom in just a second I'll be short. Evelyn Throne, Marsville. Um, yeah, I'm really uh, grateful that we're going to start moving along and have some time before the budget stuff heats up again to really think things over. Thank you for the deep thoughts you're trying to do on this um, the tax. I agree um, that we need to have two versions of things almost. One is something that people can easily digest, perhaps with links or to websites or other information, so that if you want to dig deeper, you can. That would be on the budget. That would be, you know, a little 10 points about this tax, you know, how it's going to affect. So we can not keep reinventing it and talking about it, but we have it in front of us. Um, I also uh, am happy to hear that we are hoping to he see <laughs> that we are both will, will all be res more respectful, calmer, perhaps more to the point, acknowledge that we hear each other when we do, both the select board and anybody in the audience. You know, I think that that will serve two purposes. People will want to come and listen to the meetings more, and we will make sure that any tone that people speak at at these meetings will not serve to um, perhaps discourage people from serving. Um, the third thing is that uh, I'm so completely, I can't tell you how, how excited I am about the riparian buffer things that we're, it's something I've looked at for 20 years. The more you read about it, the more time goes on, the more it is validated as and and nature just knows how to do things so much better than people do and it does it naturally um so looking forward to that i would also like to have the idea of making sure that um the people are included you know we feel so powerless we really do after the floods and in the face of mother nature it's easy to feel that way but um if we feel that some good can come out of it you know like my husband and I volunteered some after the flood and because it's the only thing I could do. I just felt like a weight was on my head. And if people can feel that way about the park and then they can also feel more ownership of it. And you know, there's just so much, it snowballs the good that can come out of that. So um, yeah, I'm glad that we're gonna, seems like we're gonna work on going forward with that. Thank, Thank you. you. Anybody else in the audience? Kathy? Good evening. Go ahead, um, Kathy. I just had a couple of things um, on the budget that's printed. Maybe um, the changes could be in red, like maybe Todd did with the town plan. Um, anything um, that increased in price would be in red. Anything that was negative would be in red. Any deletions would be strike through. Um, so that's just an option there. Um, I want to say uh, thank you to Chris for looking into that um, to that tax because we really need to do something. And um, we also have cannabis shops. I think there's three that I know of in town, but there could be more. Um, were them included in um, the tax taxation too? Because they really should be. 
Um, and uh, the gentleman that opened the first one next to Hannaford's, when he came to the last select board, I don't think any of you were there at that point. Maybe Don was. Yeah, I think Don and Judy were. Um, he promised he was going to give us 1% of his sales. Has that ever is, did that ever transpire? Did he hold up on his promise to come in here and be the first one? I, you probably can't answer that tonight, but that's really a question because he did promise that. Um, and the third thing I want to say is I think that um, there was a lot of people that were really disappointed when the village garage was sold. I don't, none of you were on the board. I don't know if Don was, if it was that far back, but um, it was never publicized that they wanted to sell it. Um, nobody ever knew anything about it. Nobody knew that we were going to pay $100,000 a year in rent. I think that could have been handled totally different. I know that you guys weren't on the board, but this, this, is, this is the feeling out there. Um, maybe we could have gone a few years and saved $100,000 and planned it out a year so we wouldn't have had to take a, you know, loan, so much of a loan out. But that was very disappointing, and I hope that doesn't happen again with anything that we own. I hope that the, that the taxpayers could be involved in a sale or at least the knowledge of the sale of our property. Um, and I guess that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Sam Harrington? Hannigan. Hannigan. Sorry, can't read it from here. How's it going? Can you hear me? Yeah, could you introduce yourself, please? Yeah, uh, Sam Hannigan from the Morrisville VFW. Um, I was wondering if the town has any comments regarding the interactions with Todd Thomas regarding the threatening property dispute in the VFW um, and the lies he sputters, the relationship between him and Graham Mink, uh, the shared lawyers between the town of Morrisville and Graham Mink, and the countless issues regarding Todd Thomas and the community over the years. Um, and wondered when something's going to be done there. If he's just going to keep doing whatever he wants and being, yeah, I'm not going to say it. Um, and then Todd claims that the zoning or planning department can't afford to zoom into a meeting. Um, so me being in Iraq, I'm not allowed to have any say in what goes on with the planning or zoning administration because nobody there is capable of turning on a computer and opening up a Zoom link, and it doesn't cost $5,000. Um, and also, I just wanted to make note of the display of the flag shoved in the corner behind a chair. A little Google search will show some flag etiquette. That's all. Thank you. Yeah, I'll just quickly say, yeah, the, the board, certainly the chair has, has no comment about, about uh, your questions at this point. Any other Paul, comments? Couldn't help myself. Paula Beatty Morristown, taxpayer. I'm not like it's just just wanted to congratulate you, Chris, on your election as um, you as well, Richard. And then just wanted to say thank you for your out of box thinking. Um, I totally support the garage. Uh, it's a lot of money that I believe is being wasted. Um, and I, I think it's awesome that you are listening to the taxpayers um, and doing the research that has been asked of you to do. Um, also wanted to just congratulate the two young ladies that are joining the fire department. I think that's awesome. And just uh, kudos and thanks to the uh, police department and to EMS. Thank you, Paula. I am sorry, Mr. Palermo, I did not congratulate you earlier. <laughs> so, egg on my face. So, anything else from the community? Okay, we'll move on to other business. So, um, I have several motions to go into executive session. Um, the uh, first is I move to enter executive session because I find that premature general public knowledge of labor relations with employees to the body will clearly place the town at a substantial disadvantage. I have a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. All those in favor of the motion as presented? Aye. 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 Any opposed? 
I would move to enter into executive session to discuss labor relations agreements with employees under the provisions of Title I, Section 313A, 1B of the Vermont Statutes to include Interim Town Administrator Jason Luneau, Former Human Resources Director Paula Beatty, Interim Human Resources Director Tina Sweet, and Highway Superintendent Kevin Barrows. I have a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. So I have a motion by Chris, second by Laura. All those in favor of the motion as presented? Aye. 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 Opposed? That would be unanimous. Go ahead. I would move to go into executive session because I find that premature general public knowledge would clearly place the public body or a person involved in a substantial disadvantage. I have a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. A motion by Chris, second by Laura. All those in favor, say aye. 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 That would be unanimous. I move to go into executive session to discuss the appointment or employment or evaluation of a public officer or employee subject to T1 VSA 313A3 to include Interim Town Administrator Jason Luneau and Interim Human Resources Director Tina Sweet. I have a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. That's motion by Chris, second by Richard. All those in favor of the motion as presented, say aye. 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 That would be unanimous. I move to go into executive session because I find that premature general public knowledge of the pending contract negotiations will clearly place the town at a disadvantage by disclosing this negotiation, just negotiation strategy. I have a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. Motion by Chris, second by Laura. All those in favor of the motion as presented, say aye. 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 That would be unanimous as well. And finally, I move to go into executive session to, to discuss pending contract negotiations under provisions Title I, Section 13 of the Vermont Statutes and to include Interim Town Administrator Jason Leno. I have a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. I have a motion by Chris and a second by Laura. All those in favor of the motion as presented, say aye. 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 That's unanimous as well. Okay. I just want to say thank you so much for being quiet and not rushing out. It was so much easier for me to catch everything. So thank you, folks. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much, everybody, for coming.